Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Taurus here and in today's video, you know it had to be something special for me to pull out neutrals, honey. I am the type of person who loves color. But in case you have not checked out the title already, honey, we are working with the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals Palette and look at her, honey. The outside already, cardboard, so you knew I had to get it. I'm telling you, plastic is pretty, but if you like me and you like to deep hot your shadows, Cardboard is always the way to go. And when you get on the inside and you go, baby, this is a true neutral palette with no black. I knew you all would want to know about this. So I cut off everything, got this tutorial up as quickly as I possibly can. So if for any reason you want to know how to achieve the look that I'm wearing right now, or if this palette is worth picking up, just make sure you continue to watch. But first, let's go ahead and get into those swatches. And here she is in all her glory. The Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Divine Neutrals palette. She is simple and elegant, just like everything Jaclyn does. She loves to keep it simple. It is a cardboard packaging, so that is something I love. So even if I notice that these are not magnetic palettes, usually Morphe palettes aren't. But with cardboard packaging, it's much easier to depot than it is with plastic. I don't have to go through using heat or anything like that. So that's something I'm loving and adoring. On the inside, we have 12 shades. There are six mattes on the top, six metallics on the bottom. And this is what I would consider a true neutral palette. It doesn't lean really warm or cool. It seems to be right in the middle. The only thing I did notice just by looking at them, I don't know if you can tell from this distance, but the very first matte shade called Chic Happens is a matte with floating glitters. So that's something we want to take into consideration later on. When I tell you I was not ready, baby, I was not ready. Look at these colors. One finger swatch, no primer, every single shade looks beautiful. Every single shade. And remember I told you that very first shade chic happens? I'm going to give you a close-up swatch. Because that one even looks matte up close. Like you have to really, really be paying attention to notice those floating glitters. But we're still going to see what kind of fallout it gives us on the eye. But you can look at this. Oh my goodness. These colors are beautiful. Look at the variety, sis. These colors are gorgeous. Gorgeous. You can use this any day and every day. Honey, let me tell you, I am racing out the door. This palette was not supposed to come to tomorrow. Ended up coming yesterday. I did not know it until I opened it. Got to get into it. The makeup community comes to a steal when you get a new release from Jaclyn Hill. I understand this is not Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is a collab with Morphe. But when Jaclyn Hill puts her name on something, honey, I get excited because I'm a Hillster. And you know... For something to be neutral and for me to want it, it had to be popping. I kept looking at the colors online, but I'm like, I'm not sure. Realized they released it early on Ulta, had to get it. So I have it now and it's still not even in store. So I will be up late tonight to make sure I get this tutorial up for you all. But enough talking because I'm already running late. So let's go ahead and find us some brushes to get things started. And baby, I even stayed up, washed brushes to make sure they was fresh and clean. Cut off my nails to make sure we had good swatches because uh, we wasn't getting nothing wrong today. So let me look at her again, see what we got going, and let's get started on this. This shade here is called Good Vibes, and just because I like the name, we're going to go in with this as our transition. And I almost forgot to tell you, you already know, all tools and products used in today's video is in the description bar below. All right, you already know. I love Jacqueline, but I'm going to be honest with y'all each and every time. Considering how creamy and how beautiful those swatches are, I wasn't expecting this much powdery kickback, 
So I've loaded my brush up and we're going to go ahead and see how much pigmentation we're going to get because I'm not worried about fallout. Okay, so far she blends beautifully. Just because of my complexion, I really wish this shade would have had a little more pigmentation. So I'm guessing she's going to be a little more buildable for those with, you know, a much more beginner friend. Uh, I'm guessing the pigmentation level is a lot less because it's more beginner friendly. But on camera, she looks a lot better than she does in person to me. The thing is, I guess because she's a true transition shade, she's okay. But y'all know I like deep, dark neutrals. So for my personal preference, I would have wished they would have had a shade just a little bit darker than this. But I think most people can get away with that. When you look at her straightforward, you can clearly see there's something on there. So I don't need a second layer to go in as a true transition shade. But because I like things deep and dark, I'm going to go in with one more layer just to see how buildable and how pigmented she really is. Okay, on that second layer, I am noticing a bit more pigmentation, so I am loving that. So she is buildable. She was blendable from the very first one, so I'm not worried about that part. No patchiness. And you can see, she looks even darker now than she did that first time. So yeah, okay. At first I was worried. I'm like, hold on, Jacqueline, we need pigmentation, honey. Some of us got a deeper complexion. But considering the fact she's buildable, I think... Regardless what your complexion is, you'll be able to get this thing going. Okay, I just want to make sure I have really soft edges because y'all know the transition makes everything look better. If she good, then the crease shade will be a lot better. All right, now that I'm satisfied with that, I'll be right back after I do this on the other side. Honey, I was in shock that I didn't get any fallout from that first shade. So we're going to go into this second shade here, Boo Bear, and use that throughout our entire crease. Once again, just because the name is cute. All right, honey. Once again, this shade is probably even more powdery than the first one. And because she's so dark, I'm going to go ahead and tap off some of that because we can always go back in and add more. I don't want this color to take over my entire crease. So we're going to go in, starting on the outer half, and build this up in the lower crease. And baby, just off that pigmentation, I am so happy that I did knock that off because that would have been way too much color. And honestly... I think this one brush load may go ahead and give me what I want. Of course, you know, I'm going to go in and do that second layer just because I want to see what pigmentation and blendability is like. But she comes through, honey. She seems to be a little more pigmented than the first shade, but I wouldn't say she's quite as blendable. Takes a little more to diffuse the edges of this shade here. But we're going to do that before we go in and build up our second layer. Yeah, you can definitely see the definition that this gave on this side. I'm going to go in and pick up just the fallout this time. I don't want to dip too much and knock off as much of that as possible. I just really want to see what type of buildable pigmentation we can get from this shade. Okay, yep. The areas that seem to give me, I wouldn't say they were patchiness just because I have hooded eyes. But certain areas are a little harder for me to blend than others. And with this second layer, I can truly see that everything is now completely covered. Everything has gone through. I had an even blend. So once again, we have pigmented, we have buildable shadows. I want to make sure I diffuse my edges of my crease without covering up my transition shade. Yeah, usually it's harder for me to blend right here on the front half of my lid than it is the outer half. And she's good to go, honey. One smooth, even color. And you can see how she already looked like she's set up to be a brown smoky eye. But we ain't gonna do that. We'll be back. Once again, you guys, we got pigmentation. It was buildable and no fallout. So just because I want a little more drama, we're gonna go in and deepen up our crease with the darkest matte shade. This one here is called Cinnamon Roll. And right now, that do sound good, but we're gonna avoid it. And just like the other shades, we do have kickback in the pan, but I dusted my brush off once again because this is a very dark shade and I don't want it to take over. So we're going to place this on the outer end and we're going to put this right in the lowest part of my crease. Honey, I want to make sure I get that deep dark definition that I love. 
And honestly, with a color like this, honey, who needs a matte black? You all know blacks are my favorites behind greens, but this shade here is so nice and deep and dark that you can use it on those days where you want smokiness, but you don't necessarily want an actual black. I'm starting off with it low in the crease, and then I'm lifting my brush up just slightly to diffuse those edges. And I am loving the blend on this. Honey, she's blending much better than Boo Bear did. And she appears to have much more pigmentation than the other colors. But with her being dark, that was expected. So we're gonna go in once again, just doing one more layer, knocking off as much as possible just to see what the buildable, the buildable, just to see what the blendability and the buildability with this is. Yeah, same thing as the others. You get a little more pigmentation with that second layer. She was already completely opaque on that first one, but it seems like any little area that you think you might not have blended right or anything on that second layer, she would truly come through. This shade appears to blend a little easier across the eye than Boo Bear did as well. Okay, soften up those edges. And there we have it. With that darker shade, you see we have even more definition than we do on this side. So I'll be right back after I do this on this side. Normally, I will cut my crease with such a dark look, but because I wanna to try to keep things a little bit softer, we're gonna go back into this shade Boo Bear with the same brush and deepen up our outer V. So what I've done is just loaded this color up on one side, and I'm just gonna take it and press it right there into my outer V. I don't mind covering up some of that crease work because we're going to go back in with the next deeper shade and deepen that up. I usually just go about one brush head length and just press it straight on and whatever pigmentation it gives me from there I can just diffuse out and I'm going to do this on the other side. Now we're going to go back into that shade cinnamon roll and do the same thing but we're going to make sure we keep that color a little closer to the outer edge of the eye. And honey, this is the thing about true first impressions because normally I would have went straight in and cut my crease because I could have did this while I was blending, but I wasn't even thinking about it. I really thought I was going to go in for something a little more dramatic, but that's the thing about makeup. And as you can see, I will get some fallout with this because I'm just packing it on with a blending brush, so that's not the fault of the shadow, but I have not covered that first shade here, Boo Bear. You can see that peeking through behind this dark uh, brown on the outside. And I just want to take that and diffuse the edges. And once I do so, I'm gonna go back into that crease and dip the things back up because I may have softened them up with that Boo Bear shade. All right, and now you can see the crease is still deep. You can see the transition up to that brown shade Boo Bear, and we still have space right here for our lids. Be right back after I do this on the other side. Normally, when I do my shimmers, I like to go lightest to darkest. Today, I'm gonna switch it up and go back and forth. So I wanna try to get three different shades on the lid. The first one we're gonna put in is this shade here, Dripping. Then for the center of the lid, we're gonna lighten things up and go into this shade here, Birthday Suit. Then we're gonna deepen things back up with this shade here, Strip Tease. Okay, we got this first shade here, Dripping. Not gonna lie, she was a little tough to pick up. So if for any reason we have a hard application, I'm gonna try with a silicone applicator to see how that goes. But we're going to start her off right here on the front third. She's going on. We have some fallout, but not as much as I expected. She's not giving me full pigmentation, but she is cute. I'm going to try to go back in with a second layer, see if she's going to build. Okay, she's definitely building. That's a good thing. Let's keep her going and see what we're going to get. All right, so just on the eye, she's beautiful. She's not giving me the most opacity or the most shine. But I'm going to try her again with a silicone applicator after I do her on the other side. And even though it really doesn't matter because most people aren't going to use it, I really don't feel like using my fingers today. So out of curiosity, I've picked up my silicone applicator and we're gonna see what this shade dripping looks like if I try to double up on top of that because I really want to see if the applicator is gonna make a difference with this shade. 
Yeah, and I feel as if if you were to use your finger, you probably would get more opacity because it seems to be a lot cleaner with the silicone applicator, but most people are gonna use their brushes. So I'm gonna say with this shade here dripping, you might either wanna go in with a tacky base or like a concealer base or use your finger or a silicone applicator because I just don't feel as if a brush is gonna give her the best application. Not a dry brush at least. On to the next shade. All right, with this shade here, Birthday Suit, it wasn't the easiest to pick up, but it was certainly easier than dripping. So we're gonna see how she applies. Gonna start off in front there and bring it up on top of that shade. We wanna make sure we can diffuse our edges. And yeah, this shade goes on a lot easier as well. I'm not getting as much fallout. I'm getting more pigmentation on this first layer. The edges are diffusing a lot easier. So to me, this shade here, Birthday Suit, is better than dripping. Gonna go in with a second layer just to see. Here, and that second layer is giving me much more shine and opacity. Oh yeah, I'm really liking this shade here. Birthday Suit, she's a winner. And even after a second layer with birthday suit, I have less fallout than two layers of dripping. So, oh yeah, I think she's going to be a favorite right there. Be right back. Going to do this on the other side. Back, and before we put strip tees on, it appears the darker the color is, the easier it is to put on with these shimmers because this shade picked up even easier than the first two. But how does she apply? Let's find out. Gonna go ahead, put her on the outer half. And what we want to do with this color is help blend that second shimmer shade and the lightest matte shade together. This is the one that has to be friends with both people, honey. You don't get to choose a side, honey. We need you to be cool with everybody, the mattes and the shimmers. And this is just to make sure she deepens up that shade in the middle and gives us a nice soft transition to the outer V shade. Didn't want to shade extremely light next to my outer V because it'll take away from some of that definition. If I look forward, you can see how on this side where we haven't finished, it looks really bright. And then you just see this spot here. So it looks sort of patchy because it's that gap in between. Over here, you can see where it looks nice and smooth and it just gradiates over. But you can see where since we put the lighter shade here, it sort of gives us the image of a spotlight, but still gradiates like a cat eye. Be right back. And just because I like doing the most, I'm going to take my brush with the cinnamon roll on it, my smallest blending brush, and I want to go right back in and make sure just the outer half of my crease is deep and dark. I'm not going to take it all the way in. I literally just want to dust it right there to make sure that when I do my concealer and everything, the outer V is still the deepest and darkest part of the eye. Because I'm satisfied with what we have going on on the lids, I'm gonna cut away, finish off the face, and when I come back, I'll show you how we'll finish off the eyes. Honey, when I tell you, things have been coming out beautifully. Using a bunch of products I never tried before, so let's go ahead and get into it. First off, these lips. I've already used this lip liner many times before. This is the Straight Living Lip Liner by The Lip Bar. They are absolutely fabulous. I think the only one from them that I had never tried before was the red one. Finally used it the other day. She was gorgeous. Because this look was so neutral, I was going to go in with something really soft, but I'm like Taurus. For the eyes, you have a nice dark crease. Why not do a dark lip liner and something nice and soft and pink on top to help bring it to a neutral look? So for lip gloss, I went in and trying for the first time the lip gloss from Lunar Beauty. This shade is called Dreamy and honey, she is dreamy. She's much more of a sheer, I'm gonna say peachy pink, but she has some nice pink pearls in her. But this tube in this packaging is absolutely stunning. You have that crystal right there on top. This gloss is beautiful. And right here, the applicator is nice and wide, honey. So it's nice and flat. If you wanna go ahead and pile it on, you can use it because 
it comes with gloss on both sides of the applicator so you only have to dip twice as I mean not twice as often half as often absolutely stunning I really wish Lunar Beauty was sold in stores but I see myself having to pick up some more if not just for the packaging alone for this formula because it really feels as if there is nothing on the lips it's not until you actually press and glide your lips together that you can tell something is there just sitting here absolutely fabulous for the face i had to jump over to jacqueline cosmetics honey you wasn't gonna give me a jacqueline hill and morphe eye palette and me not use none of her face products so today i am trying out the bronze and blush duo this is the one in hot lava cocoa rich and i'm here to tell you first off her packaging is beautiful. I truly believe her when she said Morphe would not be able to offer us this type of packaging. Not at their prices, honey. The thing is, I got this because I was worried about pigmentation. I'm here to let you know, honey. Although she is powdery, she is truly pigmented. One tap on this side, it was enough to do both sides. And you can see that pink blush on both sides of the cheek. I did this one first, which is why she got that little spot right there, because I went in with like, boop, realized that was my fault. That was not the formula's fault. I underestimated it, but she's beautiful. And I truly say, you check these out in person. Don't just buy them online like I did, because now I have a shade that I believe is way too dark for me. So if I buy me a lighter shade, more than likely, I may give this away because I can use it, but she'll be much more flattering on someone with a deeper complexion than mine. For highlighter, honey, I didn't know. I don't know which one this is. This is just her loose highlighter in the shade Bomb. First off, this little packaging is adorable. And on here, it only says you get four grams. And you would think, okay, four grams is not that much. But for this loose highlighter, honey, she might become a new all-time favorite. I, I know Jaclyn Hill is known for her highlighters, honey. It wasn't until she came out with Prosecco Pop for Becca that Becca had a shade that actually fit me. So I wasn't looking for them until she came around. But when I tell you, you see the way that nose highlighter looking and you can build her up. If you want to go in subtly, you okay. But let me show you like, since we standing right here, honey, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a little sprinkle of this. You see, it is barely anything on there. You can barely even see it on there. Let me keep it up in view so y'all know I ain't doing that extra. Go swirl her right there. Watch this, honey. This highlighter does not play with the girls. Watch this. You see the way that being picked up? Baby, it's barely anything on the brush and she is giving me beam goals. Like, oh, I did not know they were this good. I did not know they were this good. Lastly, for the eyes, I didn't have anything new I wanted to test out because I figured everything else was going so beautiful. I had to put the finishing touches on it to make sure we didn't have no problems. So for eyeliner, pulled out my old school favorite. My favorite dark brown is Demolition from Urban Decay. You got to try their 24-7 Glide On Eye Pistols. They are amazing. Favorite mascara, the Lancome Monsoor Big. Still have a sample size I had over here, so there was no point of pulling out my full size. She worked just as beautifully. I did not want to go in with strip lashes today because I wanted these eyes to stand out and pop for themselves. But we're not through with this look. Let's go ahead and finish because I am ready to see the final look. And just like on the top, we want to create depth and dimension on our lower lash line. So we're going to go in with our largest pencil brush and our first shade here, Good Vibes. And even though I've already told you how I felt about this shadow, I must point out that with the pencil brush, you get much less fallout and kickback in the pan. So we're going to start here on the outer half. And we're just going to buff that up. I did load my brush up because I do understand that if for any reason I get fallout from this shade, she's light enough on my complexion where she won't leave a mess. And I want to see how much fallout can I get with a shadow like this. And once we get it close to the outer edge here, we're going to buff and connect that because we want to soften those edges and we want to have a nice gradient. We don't want there to be any harsh lines on this look today. And just for the thrill of it, Gonna go in one more time, see if she builds up. Mm-hmm. She's coming out beautifully, honey. You may not be able to see that, but I'm telling you, the way she's softening up these edges, and I can tell on this side that this side is a little brighter than this side because I do have their transition shade here, but 
We're gonna do this on the other side and I'll be right back. Now we want that smoke on the lower lash line to stand out. So we're gonna take a smaller pencil brush in this shade here, Boo Bear, and we're gonna buff that all over the lower lash line. And yeah, honey, I got talent and patience, but we're not gonna test ourselves like that. Because this shade is darker than my complexion and we going in on the lower lash line, we gonna knock her off. If we get kick up and fall out then, we can worry about it. But we're not gonna purposely go in and try to create it. So we're gonna start once again on the outer end. Buff that up and you can see, yeah, that color immediately starts to show up and show out. So I am glad that I diffused it. And you wanna make sure you connect that to the outer end. You do not want there to be a gap there. All right, and you can just see with one layer, this side is much more smokier than that side. And I wanna go in and get just a tiny bit more because that color did not go all the way over to the front end. But then again, I have very large eyes. So we're gonna start from this end very soft and slowly, go back and make sure we create one large opaque line. And that should do it for me. Oh yeah, she's beautiful. Be right back once I do that on the other side. Honey, if I were doing this look on someone else, I would stop here because I figured things are smoky enough but I don't never have enough drama when it comes to my eyeshadow. So we're gonna go in with this shade here, cinnamon roll and a push liner brush. And we're gonna put that as close to the lashes as we can possibly get. Once again, because we're going so close to the lash line with the shade much darker than our complexion, we're gonna tap off the excess because we can always go back in for more. But I'm gonna start this right here as close as I can to those lashes and create that line. We want to move very slowly because we can always add more but a color this deep will easily take you from zero to 100 and what i want to do is just help accentuate the eyeliner we put down and we want to make sure there are no gaps connect that to the outer end and you can see how that tiny bit of product with a brush this small has this eye looking much more darker and smokier than this side now I wanna go in and highlight my inner corner and my brow bones. And even though I know this first shade here, She Happens does appear to have much more of a pink tone and my skin has much more of a yellow tone, I really wanna see how much fallout I'm gonna get from those sparkles with this shade. So we're gonna use this first on the brow bone and if we need to change it, we can always go back and do so. Okay, you guys, and I'm really worried about this cause baby, once again, pink undertone plus glitter fallout, we gonna see. So we gonna take her, First, bring her right there to the top of the brows because you can see she instantly stands out against my complexion. If she had much more of a yellow tone to her, she would be all right. But so far, she does appear to be going on rather matte. I'm looking up close and I think with me being all up in the mirror like that, I can see the sparkles. But once she on the skin, honey, you don't notice that. Yeah, my brows really look lifted because it has that pink undertone right there. So, seems like a good shade to me. Our last and final step for the eyes is to highlight our inner eye corner. And for that, we're gonna go into the lightest shimmery shade, All Lux. Okay, and no lie, out of all the shimmers, to me, she felt like she was the smoothest against the brush but she also seemed to give me a little trouble with picking her up. So we're gonna hope she got a real good beam on her. We're gonna go in and we're gonna see. And when you first put her on, she had me scared, but then once you start actually applying her, she go on. And see, I'm getting the same thing on this side. So my guess is that very first layer may not be the strongest in the world, but she's extremely buildable because by the time you get to doing this a few seconds, you see just how strong that color comes through. And look at that, baby. You could see that in her eye corner. Beam, Ming. She is definitely buildable. And just to make sure that they blend, I'm gonna bring it up a little further and connect that right there on the top, just for a little added flare. Oh yeah, honey, I am loving that. Now it's time to set everything, so grab your sprays because you know I'm about to grab mine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things last all day. Cheap 
fan, expensive breeze, good times. I'm going to give this a few more seconds to dry down and I'll be back to show you all the final look. And this is the final look. I'm going to go ahead and give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And honey, I'm here to tell you, Jack Mahale done killed it again. Honey, anybody who knows me knows I am a colorful person. Greens, purples, pinks, give me those. I have enough neutrals in my collection. And it's something where I honestly wear more neutrals on camera than I do in person. And it's because I know y'all like them. I really look at things like, what is the point of taking all that time, all of these brushes, just to get a basic brown look? But then again, you sit back and you remember. Brown is more professional. Brown is more universally flattering. And when you can get a look like this, honey, this is not intimidating to others. When I'm wearing my green eyeshadow and I'm sitting back, I may feel beautiful. I may think I look bomb, but somebody else could be looking at me from across the room like, baby, that is loud and over the top. With this, honey, you definitely know it's makeup. I mean, I can't lie and tell nobody this is all me natural face. But when they see this, it goes, ooh, that's pretty. That's soft. That's natural. Even though you see, we got things nice and deep. I'm headed out for dinner, so I didn't want just a soft light brown because we could have went in there. I think I used eight shades today. It would have been nothing to stop my shades right here up in this area and had a soft look. But for those with a deeper complexion and those who like a deeper tone, I had to go in with this deepest shade to see what she was like. If, if I just had to be a negative fancy and say which are the worst shades based upon the ones I've used today, I would say for Max, Boo Bear was probably the hardest to build up, but she did build, she was blendable. But once again, we just being negative and having to pick something. With the shimmer shades, I would personally say, I'm gonna go with this shade Drippin'. Drippin' was probably the hardest one simply because he was the first one. She was the hardest to build up and everything else had an easier time. But other than that, if you ask me, Taurus, is this palette worth it? Do you recommend this? Absolutely. Absolutely, honey. First off, I understand Morphe does not make my favorite formula. I'm just going to put it out there. I love Jaclyn, but I think out of the four Morphe palettes that I own, three of them are Jaclyn Hill. I have the original one, the Volume 2, this one here, and the 18B Making Bank. Never even used the Making Bank. But for those who are like, well, I wonder if this, I'm telling y'all, these shades are different, honey. Most of her palettes are either way more warm or way more cool than this. And I'm telling you, this is right up the middle. This is a neutral palette. For those who did not want that first palette because you feel as if it's one or two rows full of colors, those purples, those greens, those blues, and you're never going to use those colors, why purchase something that large? If you're someone who gets anxiety trying to figure out a look, 35 shades may be way too many for you, even if you like the color story. With 12 shades here, She's small, she compact, she right to the point, and she's not confusing. You can look at this and know what type of look you want to go for each and every time. Then, if all of that wasn't good enough, the fact that she's only $18. $18 and an influencer clap? Come on now. We got brands out here putting out $20 palettes with nobody associated with them. So to know they got Jaclyn Hill behind it, the price is beautiful, honey, and I see another sellout coming, so... Once again, if you ask me, Torrance, oh, y'all got to excuse me. I'm going to keep pulling this hair over until I get to where I got to go. We got to make sure we stay cute. And I only want half my face getting rubbed on by this hair. Screw that, sis. But I am telling you, I am getting ready to head out. I am recording this video on Sunday the 3rd, but you all will get it on the 4th because I got to let my subscribers know. If you are on the fence about it, go and get it. I don't believe it's available in store yet because I did go to Ulta earlier and they did not have it. But it is available online. You can pick it up. I recommend you pick it up. Also, this Lunar Beauty Gloss, baby, my lips feel more hydrated than they did before I put it on. So I'm definitely about to go look that up. But I don't want to keep my family waiting. I just wanted to make sure I got this information out for you all. So with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, 
Goodbye, YouTube.